the U.S. is rethinking its China tariffs. Biden wants to reduce costs in the U.S., but after China's threats to Taiwan, he is also considering increasing them. The U.K. summoned a representative from China to explain China's aggression towards Taiwan. Tensions are fraying between London and China. China's new white paper about Taiwan backtracks on many of its promises. Originally, China promised not to use force in Taiwan or send administrators there. But now those promises are gone. China's secretive Beidaihe meeting has begun this week. It's likely China will come closer to deciding who will be its next leader and how it will treat Taiwan. When homeowners in China complained about the inferior quality of their houses, they got beaten up by developers. China's internet was shocked. Finally, Chinese women are choosing not to have children. China may lose its title of most populated country to India sooner than expected. Let's get into it. Welcome to Sound of Hope News. My name is Daniela Wollensack, and today is August 12th. China's military drills around Taiwan have led the Biden administration to re-evaluate whether it should scrap some tariffs or impose others on China. The administration has been struggling to ease the costs of duties on Chinese imports during the Trump administration. Now, Biden is trying to lower the tariffs to combat skyrocketing inflation and rising costs in the U.S. The tariffs were originally to pressure China over its suspected theft of U.S. intellectual property. The Trump administration had approved tariff exclusions for over 2,000 Chinese import categories, including many important industrial components and chemicals. But those expired as Biden took office in January 2021. U.S. Trade Representative Catherine Tai has reinstated only 352 of them. Industry groups and U.S. lawmakers have urged her to vastly increase the numbers. The tariffs make Chinese imports more expensive for U.S. companies, which, in turn, makes products more expensive for consumers. Bringing down inflation is a major goal for Biden's administration, ahead of the November midterm elections. Biden's team has considered a combination of eliminating some tariffs, launching a new Section 301 investigation into potential areas for additional tariffs, and expanding the list of tariff exclusions to aid those companies that can only get certain supplies from China. According to the White House, Biden has yet to decide. Commerce Secretary Gina Raimondo said in an interview with Bloomberg TV on Wednesday, After Speaker Pelosi's visit to Taiwan, it's particularly complicated. So the president is weighing his options. He wants to make sure that we don't do anything which would hurt American labor and American workers. Biden's next steps could have a significant impact on hundreds of billions of dollars of trade between the world's two largest economies, the U.S. and China. British Foreign Secretary Liz Truss summoned China's ambassador to the United Kingdom, Zheng Ziguang to explain his government's recent actions towards Taiwan on August 10th. The democratic Taiwan has been the latest focus of frayed tensions between London and Beijing. Trust stated, We have seen increasingly aggressive behavior and rhetoric from Beijing in recent months, which threatens peace and stability in the region. She urged Beijing to resolve any differences by peaceful means, according to Britain's newspaper The Guardian. After days of massive military drills, on Wednesday, Beijing announced an end to its operations surrounding Taiwan, but said further training and war preparation would continue. Zheng declared China's actions were provoked by the U.S., quote, in collusion with the Taiwan Independent Separatist Forces, end quote. Zheng warned senior British officials against visiting Taiwan. Relations between the UK and China have plummeted in recent years, largely due to China's treatment of its weaker population. As a result, mutual sanctions have been imposed by London and Beijing. As the top Chinese official in the UK, Zheng has been barred from entering parliament since September. Zheng recently stated at a press conference that Beijing will work with whoever becomes the new prime minister 
for the development of the China-UK relationship. Truss is currently leading the race to become Britain's next prime minister. In May, she vowed to hold China to account for its policy in Xinjiang. The Taiwan Affairs Office of the Chinese Communist Party and the State Council Information Office released a white paper entitled The Taiwan Question and China's Reunification in the New Era on August 10th. The same day, the Chinese military announced an end to military drills that raise tensions around Taiwan. The white paper outlines China's stance towards Taiwan. In it, the CCP states that it will not renounce the use of military force. In the previous white papers, the CCP promised that it would not send troops or administrators to Taiwan after unification. This promise is absent from the new white paper. The paper also brought up the false success of the CCP's one country, two systems policy. It claimed that after Hong Kong protested the anti-extradition law in 2019, the CCP enacted the national security law and achieved, in their words, universally recognized success. The protests referred to were a response to laws that let China extradite dissidents from Hong Kong to mainland China to be tried and punished. Opponents of the extradition bill said it could be used to target activists and journalists. Their fears were realized when the CCP used the national security law to violently end demonstrations. Many protesters, activists, and former opposition lawmakers were arrested under the new law. Professor Zhang Tianliang, a scholar of history, analyzed what has happened since the national security law went into effect. He pointed out that the so-called election of Hong Kong's chief executive this year had only one candidate who was selected by Beijing. Billionaire Jimmy Lai, owner of Apple Daily, Hong Kong's largest pro-democracy newspaper, was arrested under the new law. And China's crackdown on protests in Hong Kong make democracy there fake. With the removal of the promises to not send troops or administrators to Taiwan if unification is achieved, Professor Zhang concluded, quote, This white paper is blatantly saying we are trying to turn Taiwan into Hong Kong. On the day the white paper was released, the Chinese military announced that it would conduct, quote, regular patrols in the future. According to several overseas media, the annual Beidaihe meeting of the CCP's top brass has been held this week. Tourists say the Beidaihe River in Hebei province is currently closed to traffic and heavily guarded by local military police. This could mean that the meeting is already underway. Radio Free Asia quoted current affairs commentator Zhu Haiqing, saying that the Beidaihe meeting started on August 8th. At around the same time, the Chinese military announced the start of military exercises in the Bohai and Yellow Seas. The topic of the meeting is how to deal with the deterioration of Sino-US and Sino-Japanese relations. They will also discuss how to solve the Taiwan issue. According to Zhu's judgment, the meeting will adjust the military strategy towards Taiwan. He also believes that a policy on the re-election of the next CCP leader and the decision on whether to forcefully conquer Taiwan will emerge after the meeting. According to Hong Kong Ming Pao, on August 9th, the head of the drafting team for the report of the 20th CCP National Congress is currently undisclosed. But in the past, this individual usually becomes the next Communist Party Secretary General. The chair of the National Committee of the Chinese Democracy Party, Wang Juntao, pointed out on August 8th that there would be fierce struggle within the party before the 20th National Congress. If the current Chinese president fails to secure a majority of the Politburo Standing Committee and members, he will be subject to many restrictions even if he is re-elected. The downturn of the real estate industry in China has led to more and more property owners' rights being violated. The handover day of the Wuyue Plaza development in Chongqing province was on August 9th. Owners who purchased their homes were dissatisfied with the quality of work. They approached the developer Si Zen Holdings Co. for explanation, but were met with violence. The developer ordered staff to flip the sofa the owners were sitting on over, resulting in injury. 
The news hit the Chinese equivalent of Twitter, Weibo Hot Search, and aroused widespread concern. Owners report that the units in Yue Plaza have several quality problems. The measurements of the units decreased while the developer increased the number of floors. French windows have been changed into structural columns. Corridors have become smaller, and external wall exhaust outlets have been moved indoors, as well as other issues. The Wuyue Plaza is a mixed-use project under the Season Holdings Co., which was established in June 1996 and went public in December 2015. It has often been sued for disputes over house construction and pre-sale contracts. More and more Chinese women do not want to give birth in China due to the uncertainty brought about by the CCP's zero-COVID policy. This could lead to a population decline in China as early as next year. A July report by the United Nations, cited by Reuters on August 9th, projects that China's population will fall by 109 million people by 2050. This is more than three times lower than the projected figure for 2019. According to demographers, the number of newborns in China this year could fall to a record low, from 10.6 million last year to less than 10 million this year. China's recently released demographic statistics have also shown the same. Henan, the third most populous province in China, recorded a 9.5% decrease in newborn defects in the first half of this year, compared to last year. Companies that make baby goods have also bluntly stated that China's declining birth rate was a factor in their losses in the first and second quarters. A demographer at the University of Wisconsin, Yi Fuxian, has long been concerned about China's population policy. He said China's zero-COVID policy has led to zero economy, zero marriages, and zero fertility. In Shanghai and other parts of China, the loss of stable income, access to health care, and food, and even forced entry into homes and isolation during the city lockdown has caused people to feel a loss of control over their lives, which in turn affects their desire to raise future generations. Thank you so much for listening. If you like what you saw, please remember to like, comment, and subscribe. See you next week.